Hey, how's it going? It's Gary again with another episode of Gardenside Chats. Thanks for joining us today. It's a lovely day out before supposedly a thunderstorm rolls through, so we'll see what happens on the weather front. But I decided to come out to my garden this afternoon and hang out with these turnip flowers and all of the pollinators that are visiting these flowers right now. So we thought a great topic for today would be talking about the importance of flowers in your garden for overall garden health um, and also just like level of intrigue that flowers bring. So let's get started. I, you know, I can't tell what you can see in this, but um, if you can't see, there are bees of all kinds flying over these turnip flowers. So there's honeybees, uh, there's like a whole bunch of different types of bees. Um, some flies that are visiting these flowers that are in pretty much like peak bloom right now. Um, these, in per these flowers in particular are a cover crop. Um, they're turnips that were planted last fall um, for soil conditioning and like soil aeration. The turnips make a big root and they kind of like open up pockets in the soil for um, water and air to kind of like move in. Um, but a benefit of the planting an annual uh, that's winter hardy uh, in the fall for it to come back in the spring is that in the spring, because of the warmer temperatures, the plant becomes triggered to flower. So these turnips have been flowering for weeks now and have been a real boon for our local insect population. If I'm really quiet, all I can hear is, other than the birds, <clears throat> the buzz of all of the wings of the insects visiting these flowers. So. On these turnip flowers, it's a lot of honeybees. So we're making, I don't know whose honeybees, I don't have honeybees, uh, but some of these honeybees are very happy that we've got these turnip flowers. Um, and while we did not plant these turnips part, like in specifically for this reason, it is a fantastic byproduct of planting this turnip cover crop last fall. This touches on a larger point. Flowers are just a really important component into your fruit and vegetable garden. Um, and you know, some people might say like, why? Like, why can't it just be strictly utilitarian? All vegetables and fruits all the way. Well, um, on one, fruits like tomatoes, cucumbers, squash, melons, winter squash, pumpkins, eggplant, beans, all of those things that produce fruits, botanical fruits, need to be pollinated. So they come from flowers that are pollinated. So you need, so it behooves a gardener to plant flowers in and around their garden to attract pollinating insects and insects of all kinds so uh, that they visit the flowers and pollinate the flowers. So we call insects pollinators. Some insects are pollinators and then like other insects we don't really maybe have a name for, but really all insects are attracted to nectar because it's just like sugar water. Uh, it's carbs for the insect, um, a quick burst of energy, honeybees make honey out of it. Um, so lots of flies are important pollinators. Wasps are good pollinators. Beetles, oh my gosh, there's so many beetle species, great pollinators. So really, the more flowers, uh, the more varied bloom time and color, and we'll talk all about that later, the better because the more insects will be attracted uh, to your garden and they will pollinate your plants more. So you'll get more tomatoes, more cucumbers, you know, more of any of those fruits that you've got planted in your garden. Um, in addition to attracting pollinators and insects in general, uh, you want an increase. You want to increase the amount of insect diversity in your garden, um, just because the more insects, the more the, the bigger safety net you have for your garden. So if you plant a lot of flowers and have a high diversity of plant species to attract these different insects, you're going to definitely attract some probably pretty specific predators and probably some pretty general insect predators uh, that will kind of keep your pest problems at bay. So for example, in the spring, there's always this 
one cabbage moth that's a cute little white moth that like kind of flutters all through the garden. I don't see any here right now, uh, but they lay eggs and it creates a little green caterpillar that will eat lots of broccoli, cabbage, anything in that family. It'll really devastate those crops. Uh, if you have flowers planted in your garden, it, it, moths are attracted to flowers as well, but if you plant lots of flowers in your garden, you're probably also going to attract a certain type of wasp that predates only on that caterpillar, the cabbage worm. Um, and that wasp will be attracted for by the nectar of the flowers, but it will stay in your garden for the cabbage worms, and it will essentially parasitize the, the cabbage worm and kill the cabbage worm in doing so. So the more flowers and the more plant diversity, the more insect diversity and kind of the stronger your garden ecosystem. Um, then the stronger your garden ecosystem, kind of the easier it is to maintain a healthy garden with less work and less inputs on your part. Um, so what are some kind of like action steps that you can take in your garden to increase your insect diversity well obviously plant things that flower so we planted these turnips what else do we have flowering in my garden right now i have dead nettle i have creeping charlie which is also called ground ivy both of those uh creeping charlie and dead nettle are considered weeds um, but they're being uh, really visited pretty heavily by some like carpenter bees and bumblebees and I even saw a hummingbird moth just before we went on um, so there's a lot going on in those flowers so I'm just gonna let them be for a little bit uh, we also have some wildflowers we have wild geranium we have some phlox uh, we have some dogwood so we've got uh, you know sorrel is blooming right now we've got dandelions in our garden so we've got probably I don't think it would be an exaggeration to say tens of different types of flowers just in my little neck of the woods. Uh, and all of those blooming flowers means that there's good energy uh, or good like nutrition for these insects to come visit my garden. Um, and I want them to come visit my garden so I want to lure them by planting these things or letting them bloom. So. A couple weeks ago, I was looking at all this Creeping Charlie, and I was like, oh man, I'm going to mow it down and smother it and like kill it. But then they bloomed, and I'm 